Hey there, it's Rod. So today I have my how I got into reading discussion for you guys and I feel like a lot of these have really been going around booktube lately and I absolutely adore them. I feel closer to the people that I'm watching when they have discussions like this, especially because it surprises me how many people have very similar experiences when it comes to reading. And I think having that commonality with other booktubers, it just helps to really unify our community. And I just absolutely love that, that we still somehow relate and share something, even though we didn't even know there was a community to be a part of yet. I feel like a lot of booktubers tend to have one of two different experiences commonly, at least from the videos that I've watched. One is that they found some super awesome great book that just sprung their love and passion for reading, or they've sort of loved books their entire lives, whether their parents read to them, whatever reason, it's just something that's always been there for them. And mine is kind of a mixture of both of those. From a super young age, I have always had a very positive association with reading because my mom read to me when I was as long as I can remember, to be honest. Uh, she would read to me The Berenstain Bears, Dr. Seuss, whatever books we had around. And then as I started to get a little bit older, she started introducing me more into chapter books. Do you guys remember when they were called chapter books? Don't tell me that was just me in my school. But back then, they weren't just books. They were the super cool, advanced, long books because they had chapters in them. They were long enough to have chapters. But yes, as I got older, she started reading me chapter books and a lot of times it, sometimes it was her just reading to me, but it was also her sitting down with me and having me read with her that didn't just create a positive experience with books and her reading to me, but it helped me to love reading myself because this was a great experience for me and my mom. We bonded over this. Now, I never really saw it as a hobby or as a conscious passion for reading. It was just something that I always did. I had spare time, I was reading books. When I was in elementary school, I spent the majority of my time in our library. Now, keep in mind, we actually had a really awesome library for an elementary school because it was brand new, it was beautiful. And I spent most of my time there. The librarian knew me, that's how you, know you spend a lot of time in the library when not only does the librarian know you, but she actually starts putting you to work in the library, which she did. <laughs> and I read so many books, she would recommend so many books to me, and I would just sit there before school, at recess, um, when I got old enough, at lunch, and I would just read. I read a lot of the Bailey School Kids books. I loved those books. I read Goosebumps, and just Whatever books sort of got put into my hands, I was reading. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes I went out and played on the playground with my friends, and yes, I did have friends, but I just, I felt so at ease being surrounded by books. I loved spending my time reading. It wasn't because I felt lonely, I just genuinely loved reading. And oftentimes, that was just how I wanted to use my time. And my best friend in elementary school also happened to love reading, so she, and she was a very quiet person, so she didn't mind spending time in the library with me, so it was a very cohesive friendship. This continued as I got older. If anything, occasionally my teachers would get on me because I was reading the books I wanted to read over the books they wanted to read. I remember being so ambitious about the summer reading list, and I'm not talking about the mandatory ones that they have you do in high school for like AP classes and that kind of thing, but Throughout elementary and middle school, we had these long summer reading lists, and the whole idea was that you just tried to read as many as you could off of that. It was like a fun challenge, and then you would often get some kind of prize, and I loved doing that, and I won just about every time. It's kind of like winning the Goodreads challenge, but for summer. That's the best way I know to describe it if you guys didn't have that, was it was almost like having a Goodreads challenge and winning it at the end of the summer. And I always, and then as I got older, I continued to have very good relationships with my English teachers in particular because I loved reading and that was the subject that I, that's the subject that I just enjoyed the most, that I felt the most confident in. And a lot of times my teachers would 
recommend books to me just like that librarian did and they would discuss it with me and this all sort of supported my love for reading and this hobby that I didn't really think of as a hobby <laughs> It, it all just sort of came and supported that with me and it just really reinforced those positive associations. But then things sort of took a turn. I went from reading about 7 to 12 books a week in high school. Yes, I read a lot. A lot. Especially if I was on break. On winter break I'd have two weeks off and I would read no less than 12 books because I usually got a lot of books for Christmas. So I would read no less than 12 books during winter break. And I went from reading all of that at 16, 17 years old to reading hardly anything. It was not like it was an overnight change. It definitely wasn't. But life got busier. I started college. I had a whole lot going on. I had some health issues. And light, I sort of let life get in the way and I, it wasn't a conscious decision for me to stop reading. I just kind of did. And it's sad. Looking back on it, it's very sad. And I didn't even realize how much my life was kind of lacking without having this very basic passion that I've always had not in my life. I might read like a book, a, I, don't, I don't want to say a book here, but it was not nearly what it had been before. It was bad. It was really, really bad. I read mostly for school. I read textbooks. I read textbooks and not even necessarily literature as in short stories, anything like that, but just straight up chapters out of my psychology textbook or out of my history textbook. And I was lucky if I even thought about reading. And I don't know if you guys experience this, but reading is a habit. And when you fall out of that habit, you sort of have a hard time getting back into it and it, it's not to say that I stopped reading altogether but just I, I don't even want to talk numbers with you because it's just, it's sad it's sad but then and this is where Emma and I actually have some common ground and I'm sure there are a lot of people that sort of found reading for, because of this but I remember seeing the trailer for the mortal instrument city of bones I remember seeing this trailer and I was like, I have seen that book before. I had heard about the book, but more than that, I'd seen it on the shelves of Barnes & Noble a billion times. So many times. And I never really paid much attention to it. I've always seen it, but I never picked it up. And even during this time that I was not at reading as much, I still found myself at Barnes & Noble a lot. I never quite gave that up. I always spent a lot of time at Barnes & Noble, just like I do now, because Barnes & Noble is life and I just feel calmer when I'm there. It's weird. It's like my happy place. But I saw this trailer and I'm like, oh, that actually looks really interesting. How, I can't believe I've never picked up this book before. And I was determined to read this book before the movie came out. So I binge read this book as fast as I could to get it done before the movie because the movie, as it turned out, was only coming out in like a couple of days from the time I discovered it. And I messaged my best friend and I asked her, I'm like, hey, have you read this book? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, well, then do you want to go to the premiere with me? So we went to the premiere, absolutely loved it, but I loved City of Bones so much. It was a little harder to get into, but by the end of it, I was so just engrossed in the paranormal urban world, the idea of shadow hunters, and it was just so exciting and action packed. And I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And it just, reminded me of everything that I used to love about reading and I was so I was so swept up in this new excitement of oh my god I need more I need more it was almost like an addiction at this point all but one even though it took a while for me to fall out of reading it took nothing for me to get back into reading nothing all it takes is one really good book that just sort of it something in your head just sort of switches and that's what happened to me and I couldn't stop thinking about this series I couldn't stop thinking about reading and I felt like this whole world had opened up to me again even more so maybe than the way I'd felt about it before because before it was a passion but it wasn't like how it felt now this was almost like an evolution of that passion 
so that it was a conscious thought. This was a deep-rooted feeling of excitement. And nobody wanted to listen to me on this because, as most of you know, because you usually ended up here probably for similar reasons, I had nobody to really talk to about this. I really didn't. I just wanted to talk about this all the time and there was nobody to talk to. I think I met more people now in my real life than I did then that are readers. But back then I didn't have anybody. And that was how I found booktube. I was like, this is so amazing. There's no way that people could, somebody had to have posted a video about this. Somebody had to have posted a video about this. And I remember several years before that, I was looking at people that posted videos about books. And this was during my very, very long fall out of reading. But I remember looking up videos about books and I couldn't find anything. The closest I could find was this makeup guru and I'm spacing on her name. She read a book and posted a video about it. And even though I hadn't read this book, I loved this video on it and I thought, oh my god, people need to be posting videos about books. But at the time, there was no booktube. There, there might have been people posting about books, but they were in the far outfields of obscurity in the YouTube region. It just wasn't there. And I gave up on it and assumed that it was just not a thing. And rather than being an innovator and trying it out for myself, I just moved on from life. I just moved on for this. So after City of Bones, and this is a few years later, after City of Bones, I decided to look on YouTube again because I thought this book is too good for somebody to not talk about it. And that's when I discovered BookTube. I believe I found one of Caddy Tastic's videos and I was just like, yes, somebody else who loves this book, somebody else who loves reading. And then I started seeing that there were other people posting booktube videos. And this was like a revelation because this was exactly what I was looking for several years prior to this and never found it. I never found it. And within that couple year gap, this entire community was born. It was amazing because I learned that I was not the only one that felt like these types of videos needed to be put out there, that this type of community needed to be formed. And within that couple year span, my wish basically came true and I was submerged in this community that loved reading. And not only that, they loved reading the books that I read. It was, an, it was just amazing to me because at this point, I discovered a love for young adults all throughout high school. I might've read a couple of young adult books but I read mostly adult books. I read a lot of Ted Decker. I, I don't even remember all the books off the top of my head now. I read a lot of horror books, Stephen King. I read a lot, a lot of adult books in high school because it's just what I read. I didn't really understand the whole young adult thing. It wasn't the type of genre that it is today. It was a genre, but it didn't have the everything that goes with it. When you hear young adult, you have an idea of what that means. You understand, you might even have a whole list of books popping into your head when you hear that term. But back then it wasn't really like that. It just wasn't. So I read a lot of adult books in high school and I sort of moved backwards into young adult, but a lot of that has to do with City of Bones. City of Bones made me realize that I love the young adult genre. I still love adult books, but I really do love the young adult genre. And at the time that I found BookTube, this was what I was obsessed with. And there's an entire community just as obsessed as me. And finally, I decided I needed to be a part of it. And I started making videos. And I started feeling more inspired the more I started making videos, the more I started watching other videos and getting to know other people in this community. And my reading, my reading just went through the roof. I would read, I remember the January that I first started booktube. Or no, it was the January right before I started booktube. Right before I started booktube because I started booktube in February. And I think I found booktube at the end of the year before. And during that month of January, I was so newly inspired 
by all of these videos that I read 15 books that month and needless to say that weird fallout of reading book slump thing that I was in for several years was over. But yeah, that is my how I got into reading book story. It might not seem like all that much to somebody else, but for me, it it was a very intense reading journey that actually kind of helped me to understand myself and my life a little bit more, not necessarily just because of books, but it made me realize how important it is to have those passions and to have those things that you enjoy and just how sort of lifeless you can your life can be without them. And it taught me a lot about myself. It gave me my love for reading back. But it, I just, I learned a lot. And I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank Cassandra Clara. I want to thank my mom and my friends that have all contributed to my passion for reading and reinforcing that love for reading. Because you guys are just as much of a part of it as the books themselves. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to check out Cassie, Sears, and Emma's videos if you like these types of videos because their stories are just very heartfelt and I love them and they're just so enjoyable to watch. So definitely go check out their channels, go check them out because they're amazing. I guess that's all for right now. I will have more videos up soon and I'll talk to you guys later.